Hello, everybody. This is Eric Enga. I am the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting. You have reached the Digital Marketing Excellence Show. And if you're not interested in being excellent at digital marketing, please leave now. This is only for people who are serious. And we have a very serious panel with us today. We have Martin Sherrington as our special guest star. Uh, so wave hi, Martin. Um, yeah, there you go. And we have Mark Traphagen on one side of him and Ronnie Bintzer on the other. So uh, that is our panel. And as always, I'd like each of you just to give yourselves a, a brief uh, four or five hour, I mean, a uh, few second uh, uh, introduction. And then we'll dive right in. Martin, you're on. Hi, I'm Martin Sherrington. I run two communities on Google+. One is Plus Your Life, and the other is Plus Your Business. And I create uh, content such as videos and help tutorials and things like that for the Google+, Plus community. Heck. Hi, I'm Mark Trapping, and I'm Director of Digital Outreach for Verante Incorporated. And uh, I run the Google Authorship and Author Rank community on Google+, Plus. about 14,000 members on that topic now. Uh, and love to do hangouts. Like being with these guys. There you go. And Ronnie. Hi, I'm Ronnie Bincer, known as the Hangout Helper. I help people use the Hangout tool to communicate in wonderful ways. I also run a private community, which you can see behind me, called Hangout Mastery. Yeah, excellent. And I'm here helping make things fun. Uh, well, I, I guess that's your primary function, but actually Ronnie uh, was very instrumental in helping me uh, uh, get and go with my Hangouts on air, so uh, good guy, uh, does some really good stuff. Actually, all three of these guys have been very helpful to me in getting going in Google+, and, and that's the reason why I thought this would be a great uh, show to put together today uh, and talk really about how you can do more with Google+, and how you can get going faster, and and you know, have all those kinds of good things happening for you. Um, and with that, I think it would be really great to, to, to talk a little bit about um, what actually the real opportunity is, because I think some people miss that, too. You know, it's always good to start with the right top-down focus of things. I mean, what are we trying to do here? Are we trying to get massive numbers of followers? Are we trying to get on a suggested user list? Are we trying to... Uh, drive our, you know, SEO. I mean, how should we really think about this thing from the, the top level? Shall I dive in uh, on a, a real basic question that, that we probably aren't talking about so much anymore because a lot of people have been around and we talk about whatever's present. You know, a function changes, a new feature comes, and, and we, we tend to focus on that. But if we go back to, to basics, what is Google Plus? And we say Google Plus is a social layer that goes across Google's products and services. That's what Vic and Doctor says is an explanation of Google+. So what are Google's products and services? Well, we know that they've got uh, Google Search, and there's Android, and there's Google Chrome, and there's Google Drive, and there's YouTube, and da -da -da -da, Google Maps, and so on and so on. And we've got all of these products and services. And then there's an aspect, which is Google+, which is a social destination. So it's both the, the social layer and also the social destination. But when you start thinking about it, and Chris Brogan used the word dashboard a while ago, Google Plus also holds all of the activity that's going across the social layer. So you post a comment on somebody's blog, which has the social uh, comments plugin um, on, on blog or WordPress or what have you, and that will then link back into your Google Plus profile. So you, all of these outreaches that Google Plus has then come back into this social destination. So if you view it like that, what are we doing? We are utilizing the Google Plus ecosystem. That's what we're doing. We're, we're, we're including our content within that. We're linking it to our website, to any other uh, websites that we write for, to the YouTube content that we produce. And what tends to happen is that when people are looking for content, if it's the right content for them to find at that time, they will tend to find it. So I'll pause there because I could carry on. And I know Ronnie wants us to be funny today. And, and that wasn't the most hilarious explanation. <laughs> but it was quite kind of accurate. As a, well, as we, a you, were, you said Google, using the Google Plus infrastructure. I think you mean the Google infrastructure. Um, well, Google, Google. Oh, well, here we've got the punchline. Thanks, Ronnie. You set the punchline up. Why? Because Google Plus is Google. It's like the next. Bit of Google. It's it's the same. So really, Google Plus and Google, when you look at it in this way, is the same thing. Thanks, Ronnie. 
Yeah, it wasn't you know, a hilarious punchline, but it was a punchline. <laughs> Yeah, what strikes me though, I mean, that's a hell of a bet. <laughs> you know, you, you have the fourth largest business on the planet by market uh, cap, uh, and you've just redefined your whole business to, uh, around this uh, uh, social layer, uh, which you've never proven that you're capable of doing anything uh, with uh, previously. Um, which that's probably a discussion for a whole nother hangout, but it just, you know, that was sort of my reaction. But Mark, love your thoughts on this too. Well, we were talking just before we went on air, we were looking at some of the, the questions that have been coming in. And somebody asked, you know, what, what, what are the three things that are different about Google Plus from other social networks? And, and rather than try to come up with a top three list, I think Martin centered it on it here. I just want to amplify that, that for me, the standout thing, you know, I could name various features, I could name various things that are different and make Google Plus stand out. But it's not about the features so much as the, I've never seen anything like this that has the, uh, the tools built in, the capabilities to increase reach and connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get connected to more people more quickly here than I think anywhere else uh, because of the, the variety of ways, as, as Martin was alluding to, you know, the, the way that this connects into all things. And, and just overnight, we have another example because Google switched on the full connectivity between YouTube comments and Google+. Uh, and it's going to be a little rocky road at first. It's, it's kind of like two, um, two giant nations suddenly saying, you know, we're going to, we're going to unite and use the same language. But uh, the, the potential there of now that now conversations can take place, you know, in-depth conversations on Google+, Plus that will now be tied into those videos and, and, and the back and forth, and you'll be exposed to, to people and to audiences that you could never could have reached before. Uh, the search here, this, I can go on and on, but just the ability to find conversations, enter into them, build relationships, I've never seen anything like it. So I think, to me, that's one of the main uh, selling points, if that's what you're looking to do. If you're looking to get a message out, if you're looking to just build new friendships, find new people to communicate with, if you're looking to discuss a certain thing, this is a great place to do it. Yeah, it's a really important point. I know, uh, for me, I found when I started getting engaged on Google+, Plus that I was able to actually develop new relationships quite quickly. We have three of them sitting here in this uh, uh, hangout uh, with me today. Um, and there are some unique capabilities. Uh, uh, just the ability to directly, you know, communicate with somebody that I'm not currently connected with um, is uh, something that's different than what takes place on the other social networks, for example. Can I run with that, Eric? Sure. The the thing that I think a lot of people struggle with when they come on to Google+, if they're treating it like some other social networks, is they're wondering where all their friends are or where the people they already know. Some of them might be here. Some of them might not. And the key to success, in my understanding, and actually my experience, is by starting out, and I've seen this, said this many times before, but not everyone's heard it, is starting out with the what. You look for what people are talking about, or you look for what you're interested in, or what you want to know about. You do some kind of a search on those things. Then you can easily identify who seems to be the people that are talking about that. Then you look to see, do I want to interact with that person? Do they post in a way that I like or that offends me? You find, you filter down, and you eventually find someone talking about what you're interested in and you like the way they talk about it, then you start to engage, and then all of a sudden, now you know who. But if you just start with the who, then you tend to wonder if there's anything going on here. And because Google does this in a more private way for many people, it's less public unless you know how you're doing it, then you might think there's nobody here, which is funny. For those of us that have been around, we're like swamped and overloaded with the amount of interaction. But many people still say, well, there's nobody here. Well, I think they've just haven't yet gone to the point where they've discovered the what is how they start, and then they can find the right who's, if that makes sense. No, it's a great point, and it really fits, uh, I think, a good business perspective of what you should be trying to do anyway, right? Uh, you know, if you're really trying to, you know, as a business person, if you're really trying to do things that will get you connections and help uh, uh, increase your visibility and uh, um, and help your business grow, then that, that's great. They're focusing on the what because 
you know, you very quickly you find if you share interesting stuff, there's like all kinds of activity that happens with it, particularly if you've built some of the right relationships along the way. Can I add just about the bet? And saying it's a big bet. And I just want to, to, to let people know a little bit where I started with Google Plus and the results that I get and, and put some numbers on it. I know people like numbers. So I started March 6, 2012, and I began to, to get used to the to the platform, to the to the social layer, uh, so it's social network part very much, and started blogging within the platform. So there's a tip here. This is how I began. Is I, instead of having it on my blog, I started to do the, the little blogs in posts and found that there was an audience. And found to start with, there were a few shares here and there. People like Mark, people like Ronnie. There, it, was, it was a quieter time as well. So we, we, you know, we, we, there was a, a tighter community, I think, back mm -hmm. then. And uh, people started to like my quirky stuff on the psychology of Google+. And I thought, this is interesting. And, and the network arises with your content. The people that like it will stay around and they'll start to share and you share their content. We can come to more of that after. But what I then started to do is then to blog on my site. And I started to produce videos then. And in the community there seemed to be a gap for people producing the how-to stuff. Ronnie was doing very much the, 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 the YouTube and the Hangouts. And myself and Ronnie spoke, spoke about this a lot at the time. It's like, well, I'm doing the Google Plus stuff. So we have, and the phrase we use is synergistic networks. So when we share stuff, people like my stuff into Ronnie's network and, and Ronnie's into mine. So that worked. Now, put some numbers on it. So I started on my blogs, no new blogs. Zero, let's go for, as the traffic levels. I looked yesterday and there were 34,000 people that have been to my martinshimpton.com site in the last month. So I've gone from 0 to 34,000 a month. The contribution of that from search and from social without me blogging with the month in, in that, that, within that time frame is around about 31,000. So that's what I'm just naturally getting flowing through to the site from the activities I've done historically. So I have certain uh, positions in search and all the social activity that are then giving over 30,000 people a month going to the site. Okay. Um, On YouTube, I started with 1,000 people having viewed some of the videos back last October time, and that's almost, uh, as of today, probably uh, 299,000, 300,000 views. And that's in that space of time. So if people are looking for, can you make this work? Will people look at it? Yes. And there's, there's the evidence. Now, I have a, 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 there's the evidence for me. So the, the thing is, it's because the network has supported the content I've put out. People have liked it. And then what happens is that regularly people get in touch and say, I'd like to work with you. So business is generated off that. So in terms of a big bet, I think it's a very sensible bet. I think that now the time is still there with Google+, Plus, with, with help outs coming, with the integration with YouTube now looks almost pretty much complete. Um, this, is, this is the time to be on this network. I'll pause there. I can, ram I can ramble on for ages about this, because you know my passion. <laughs> All of us can. Uh, I, I want to just bring in the, the, the cultural side of that, uh, because I think it's, it's just as important here, and I know, I know Martin and Ronnie and all of us agree with that. Um, that it's important for people to know, uh, this is going off what Ronnie said earlier, that you've got to kind of have your what in place and go out and look for it. Uh, the people that have success on Google Plus don't sit back and wait for their friends to show up or don't sit back and just, you know, post stuff and then hope somebody will come and comment. But they, they go out and they find the conversations. Uh, they find the people uh, that are in communities that are engaging what they want to talk about and then enter into those conversations. And this is where I bring in the cultural aspect here. Um, that there, there is a natural culture here at Google Plus that if people post in public, they welcome discussion from anyone who is constructive and contributing good things and, and positive and, and helpful. Uh, it, there's no freak out here over, you know, I, I posted something in public and then, you know, Joe Smith comments on, who's Joe Smith? I don't know who he is. Uh, but that's just a natural flow, and you can get yourself known, and the best way to get yourself known and begin to have people want to follow you back and look at your stuff and, and, and recommend you to other people is to be contributing to their conversations. Um, in almost every case here on Google+, the, the, the very valuable relationships that I have today, and there are many, first of all, almost all of them, and I think all of us could say that, are people who I never would have known outside of this platform. 
probably never would have would have met any of the three guys I'm talking with today. Um, and you know, it wasn't like we had lifelong friendships. And then we came onto Google Plus and said, let's let's exploit that. We found each other here, and in every case, we entered into each other's conversations. And we said, boy, you know, when that Martin Shervington guy, when he comes in and when he enters into one of my discussions, it's always something you know, really good and helpful and useful to me, and that makes me want to go look at his content and look at the stuff he's posting here. That's awesome. I'm going to share that with my crowd. Next thing you know, we're friends. Next thing you know, we're, we're partners in, in putting together wonderful stuff. So just want to bring in that cultural aspect. Don't be afraid to dive in and just join into conversations. That's how you get yourself known. So one thing I want to add to that, too, is um, because I know a lot of people will have this fear. Well, okay, I've learned a few things, but I'm not an expert yet. So it might be, you know, my comments might not be seen as positive or I might be seen as asking dumb questions or, you know, I see these guys who really know their stuff having this conversation back and forth and here I am, you know, I'm, I'm not really an expert yet. And, um, you know, and I've seen with everybody, uh, you know, certainly the people in the show, but, you know, everybody else that... Uh, has established some sort of reputation and visibility in Google Plus or recognized as an expert, they're all very welcoming, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we have uh, uh, people that, uh, you know, we've tried, you know, all tried to help along and, and help promote and uh, really, you know, help them make progress and get started in Google Plus. And they're really, I'm sorry, I know it's really trite, but, you know, it's the old thing, there's no such thing as a dumb question. There really isn't. I mean, you know, people want the dialogue here, uh, and and you know, honestly, uh, uh, you know, Martin will say this somewhere during the show, so I might as well preempt him. Uh, uh, and that is, um, you know, there's no avoiding the fact that there's there is a lot of effort into it, right? Um, and this, you know, if you really want to succeed and build a strong following, you do have to plan on spending a fairly substantial amount of time interacting with people. Because that's what makes it run. Yeah. And going back to the point about there's no such thing as a dumb question, somebody this week asked me, in fact, two or three people asked me, should I set up a profile or a page? And then and it's Roxanne Davenport private messaged me and said, oh, I don't know what to do. And I just went, let me write a blog post on it because then it benefits more people. So I went off and just went, this is what my view is. And that's what it is. It's my view, but it's based upon the experience I've had and I've seen it, which is start with your profile. If you're, if, unless you're a company, start with your profile, build your network up a bit, decide if you need a page. If you want to build that up as well, then you can build it alongside. Maybe if you've got a 1,000 people following, you start to understand a bit more how the information can flow via the page, through your profile, more people see, all of it. And I wrote the, the blog post up. That came because people asked me what, some people would consider to be a dumb question because we're there going, well, of course you use a profile. You know, you don't need a bit, but it's not done. It's, and, and, so, and somebody will then go, but should I set up a community? No, don't set up a community was my response. Don't do that because you're going to end up with less people interacting and you're not there yet. And so I, I can give that as, as commentary if people ask the questions. If people don't ask the questions, we can't go back and go, hold on a second, let's now review what I think because it changes over time. Um, you know, we, sometimes we get caught on the new. We go, oh my God, this is so exciting. How parts have come out. I'm going down. I'm going to create videos. I'm going to do. It's like, hold on a minute. People are just arriving, and they need to know that if they've got a picture, then firstly that can allow their face to appear alongside search, and then Mark will we, we, we give all the details of how to, to link people to the website. But if it hasn't got the circle around it, if it's still like this, then you haven't been tagged. You need to tag yourself. Little things, tiny little things. That unless we go back and, and everybody knows that content, then they don't know it. And so, you know, it's useful to have all the questions. And in Plus Your Business, if you come to the community, you can ask anything, and we'll do our best to, to answer as well. Let me, throw, the community. let me yeah, let me throw in a <clears throat> a tactic idea to to get the most out of Google Plus. Besides starting with the what and then eventually finding the who, when you make a post, I don't suggest you make a post. I suggest you start out by listening. And this Absolutely. is going to sound odd, but if you start by listening and you start interacting and commenting, you'll get a feel for those that you're starting to build a network with, what they're interested in. Then you can guide your posting based on that rather than just saying, I'm going to stick it out there because I've also done it on Facebook and on Twitter and here and there and whatever. 
And that's when people get really discouraged, and I can tell them right away. I can see. I go look at their profile. This is public. I can go look, and I see you got post after post after post. Mm -hmm. Nobody's doing anything. Nobody's even noticing it, and you feel like you're wasting your time. I think that primarily happens because you started trying to use it the same way you use everything else, and that's just what I call, sorry for the words, link dumping. I'm going to give you a link to something. I'm going to give you a one-liner that says, check this out, and there's no engagement, there's no call to action as to why I should even care, and those of us that have been around Google Plus long enough, we eventually just ignore it, we move on, and that's not where you want to be. I'm going to do one little one little pushback on that, Ronnie, and, because, okay. and by pushback, I mean I agree with what you're saying, but I also think just as a tip, it's good to have, uh, your first priority when you first come in here should be doing exactly what you're saying listening carefully, entering into those conversations, not just to talk but also to listen to see what people are interested in, what they're talking about. But I do think that you should be putting content, your own content, on your profile or page, whichever you're using first, uh, even when nobody seems to be reading it or listening, for the simple fact that people will begin to, as you enter into these conversations and as you become helpful there and useful and interesting, people will click and go through and look at your profile. If there's nothing there, uh, that's discouraging. Well, what about this part? What what if instead of posting my own stuff, I actually shared the people I was listening to? In other words, I went to, I found Mark, I really liked Mark, and so I shared Mark's stuff. That's going to show up on my profile. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I, that's what I mean. I mean, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, Martin said, I think he started out by, by blogging on Google+, and I think that is a strategy, and I'm sure Martin, you know, in the beginning... But, but but there's a step before that, okay. which I will come on to as well. But, but okay. well, first I was going to the, the, the phrase, and I've never said this in a hangout. I don't think on air. If a post falls in the stream and there's no one there to see it, does it make a splash? <laughs> Google's list. I leave that with you. No, 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 let's think it. Don't rush on. Why yeah. would you rush on after that? I well, said Google's you listening. You said it didn't make us. A splash? I mean, is there? Well, water the point there? is, if you just yeah. if you just throwing your content out there and you haven't built your network, that and it's not related to those people that have put you in circles, it's not going to get any traction. So my one minute version, what I would say, which I think Mark's right and Ronnie's right, and I think it, my little summary would be for the first month, this is what I did, and this is what I tend to suggest to, to clients when I'm working on the coaching. Plus one, comment, share a lot of mm -hmm. other people's stuff. And share a lot, because by sharing a lot of other people's stuff, you're saying, I want my network to look like your network. I like you, and I want the people to, to see your content and to relate to that, and I want to get you lots of plus ones comment shares from my share. And that's the first thing. Now, once in a while, you can put some of your own content out, but nobody really cares as much, because you haven't built your network yet. As, as the benefit of sharing a lot of Ronnie's content, sharing a lot of Mark's content, sharing a lot of Eric's content, if you want your network to look like theirs. Now, if you want your network to be a science network, because that's what you're into, share lots of science stuff. Interact mm -hmm. with lots of people on like, so this is the what. Interact with lots of people. Go to the communities and share that content out. Because as your network grows, people that relate to that content are going to see that that's what you relate to, and guess what? That's what friends do. Is you kind of go, I like the same stuff. I like the same stuff too. This is great. We're similar. We're gonna, and you don't have to be the same. And you can have different things in your network. But if you don't share other people's content, it's really going to be very, very tough to grow the network. And you know what I tend to do when people share content, particularly if it's my own original content, I tend to put them in circles. I tend to share those circles publicly, and there's, you know, some people would do that just to say, hey, these people are making an effort on here. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that have just joined the make, and I do new, new engagement circles every week, two weeks or so, to, to try and help people grow their own network if they relate to me. So what I'm going to add to that is that um, when, when you share somebody else's stuff, if you really want to accelerate the level at which you get their attention, don't just share the link and call it a day, but add some thoughtful commentary to it that will draw a reaction from them, right? Um, and the same is true if you comment on it. You don't just comment and go, "Hey, uh, great, uh, great share, love it," and you know, put some thought into it, even if it is just a question, um, so that you actually create dialogue with that person. Or when you do your share, they actually see you adding value to the conversation. And and if you want the conversation with them, not only share plus their name in it as well. Yes, but don't you don't have to plus twenty people's names in it. 
you, if it's theirs, you can start the dialogue with them. Say, right, I find this really insightful. This is really useful. Wow, great, hilarious GIF, Mark, mm. Ronnie, Eric, whatever. That then means that they're going to most likely going to get the notification. So you mentioned the idea, uh, or you alluded to the idea of uh, sharing circles, uh, Martin. Uh, um, how can that help, and what kind of function does that play, and how does that work? Well, let, let's skip back to because we've done another little bit within the. I didn't do it to a full minute. So the other thing within the first month is adding circles. People aren't. This is why we can sit here, myself and, uh, and Ronnie and Mark. Do you remember how many circles used to be shared? that were engager circles, going back, like you and your heart. It used to be, this bunch is engaging with me on this subject, this is engaging, and it, that was a cultural thing. And when communities came along, it stopped. Now, there are people that are doing lots of sharing circles and so on, and, and, and that's a, a slightly different approach. The engager circles were very much, you're engaging with me, well, some people are doing this, you're engaging with me, I want to tell other people that because you're engaging with me, you can assume that they're going to engage with you as well. And that was a cultural thing. And I still do it because I know that when people get put into those circles and then other people add them in, it increases their follower count in a way which is engages. Because really, okay, this leads to this leads to the key punch for me of, of how to to make Google Plus work for you with a personal network, is you'll end up with 50 to 100 to 150, whatever the mark is, of people that love what you do. Mm -hmm. You don't need a 1,000. If you've got 50 to 150 people that are sharing their, your stuff into their networks, and then they're getting additional shares of people that you don't know, my arms aren't even long enough to share this. But if you get that to continue, then those 50 to 100 that relate to your content and share that onwards, you've kind of cracked it because you've managed to make your content go viral every time you've got something that that group relates to. So you don't have to have a thousand true fans on here, and certainly, you know, not from what I've seen, there's only a few people that would say have got that. Fifty to a hundred, and you can move your content. And we might even talk about search in that way. Then. Yeah. But I know that didn't answer your question, Eric. So I'll pause and let Mark comment, and I can come back to you. I just wanted to add, that, and the interesting thing that can happen here, I said back at the beginning in my first comment about the amazing connectivity tool that this is. And, and one of the things that I, I know a number of us have discovered is that the mo when you start to build that, like you said, that, that focus group around you, 50 to 100 people who really like your stuff and who are engaging and interesting people, if you, if you build, and I, I don't want to make this too utilitarian because I don't think about it this way, but it's the way it works out. If you help them build their audiences, you are also building your audience. In some ways, again, very crude analogy because I hate these things, but it's it's almost like the you know, multi-level marketing. You know, where if you're at the top of the pyramid in the multi-level marketing scheme, then it, instead of there's an incentive in you to help your um, to help. Did, I know Martin's uh, Martin's muted. Is that because I mentioned multi-level marketing? He can't, he doesn't want doesn't want to say it out loud. Um, but it, but really, you know, in, in, in that in that world, you know, if you're at the top of the pyramid, you go out and you try to uh, build up the networks of the people under you because that flows up to you. That's the theory anyway. But here it really does work. And I do a lot to try to help people who have become in that kind of you know core group of 50 to 100 to me to help them to build their audience, sharing their stuff, recommending them to my followers, um, adding my contributions to what they're doing. That sort of thing. Uh, I don't do it with this motive, but it, it does end up building my audience, because as their audience becomes bigger because they're already a fan of me, let's put, let's put it that way, as they continue to promote me and recommend me, they're now recommending me to more people because their reach has extended. So there is a there is an amazing multiplication factor that can take place here uh, if you do that correctly. So I, I'm going to add, um, I'll get to you in a second, Ronnie, but I'm, I'm going to add my first attempt at a quotable moment. For me, that is, uh, and that is that. Get your, get your Twitter feeds ready, folks. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> when you're on a social network, Google Plus is true as, as as much as any social network is general. But try to give more to other people than they give to you, and over time, it gets harder and harder, and you consistently fail, and mm -hmm. that's okay. Because if you're really good at giving to others, you end up getting so much stuff back that it you, you can't catch up. And you just keep trying to win that battle, 
and it's awesome. This is really, a, to me, a big thing. You know what? Best quote ever. <laughs> well, I wasn't necessarily looking for that status, but... Uh, um, but the sentiment's there. The sentiment's there. Hey, so yes. let, me bring, let me bring something into the focus, which is going to sound very, very simplistic and basic, but I think it's, it bears worth the discussion. So here it is. When Facebook first came out, people were there because they wanted to be with their friends and that was a way to communicate. And then at some point, it turned into more of a marketing place and people were then marketing to you. And a lot of people ran away from that. It was like, ah, it's not what I want to be here for. Um, when Google Plus came out, it was after Facebook had already run that thing through and Twitter had already done its thing and this is a new thing and all of a sudden a bunch of us realized, you know what, Google owns Google Plus and if Google.com is important to my business, it might actually be worthwhile to be on Google Plus to see if it will affect what happens when I do stuff there with Google.com. And will that help my business? And it wasn't so much I'm going to be there because my buddy's there. It was there, you're coming in here to say, I want to take advantage of what Google offers me. It's for free. There's wonderful tools. Maybe it'll also, in the mean, in the middle of it all, be useful. This is a different mind shift. And I think a lot of people, when they first come to social, that have never done social, wonder, how do you do social? So we're trying to give ideas. But the ideas aren't just to meet people. I end up meeting wonderful people as a net result, but that wasn't my initial goal. My initial goal was to influence Google. Well, there's there's a leading uh, commentary, but okay, Martin, go. I've got a couple of things. The quote that you said that I heard was, do unto pluses and they will plus unto you. That's what I heard. I, I don't know if that's what you said. But if anyone wants to tweet that, Eric said that. Fine. Do okay. unto yeah, pluses yeah, yeah. and they, and they will plus, plus unto you. you. Yes. I, that, that has a lot of variety that you could, you know, flexibility in. So, um, I or it is more blessed to plus version. than to receive. It, that's, the, that's that. Excellent. Well, good. Okay. Okay. So, the I, I want to hold up my Bible now, but I don't have one. Yeah, well, that's the only thing at the airport. See, see. Okay, right. The other thing, when people start, and I, I alluded to this, circles. Add circles in. Find the best quality circles for you, like the science circle or the, the whatever the thing is that, that that you relate to most, and add them in. Because some people will check out your profile if your profile's done it properly, and they'll add you back. That is still a solid first step and approach to build up. That's it. I just want to make sure people know. Because communities, you can, you can get a lot of interaction with communities, but it, sometimes people won't necessarily add you back because you're within the community. They have a conversation. It's still, if, if you get a notification that somebody's added to a, to a circle in the early days, the excite, you've got to remember, and Ronnie and Mark, and, and Eric too, we've got to remember, it, when you start, it's really exciting when that little red bell, mm -hmm. it, and then it turns into the, what was it, the, 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 the 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 eye of Sauron or something Mark once said, which I connected with him on, because after a while it's blinking at you, thinking, I got to go. You wake up in the morning every day and you're like 99 plus, and you have no idea what that means. You know that could be a thousand plus for you. And on mobile, it shows a little. It shows the infinity infinity mark. You know the A sideways. That's really funny. Once upon a time, you know, Mr. Jingles used to be a friend of mine. You know, it kind of like it's just it, all of this, but it but, changes to start with. We've got to remember that it, it used to be really exciting. If you'd be pressing it and you think, "Oh, yeah. what I got coming on?" Martin, you know, I even was thinking of making a business a business about how to when somebody added me, sending them a personal note. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I did yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that, and I did that. Thank you so much. And and yeah. and there was, that. but after a while, as everybody will realize when you have the experience. It, the overload of notifications is just, it's, it's a full-time job to stay on top of it. And myself, Ronnie and Mark, and Eric, I assume, as well, we all do our best to stay on top of it all. But then we've got to remember, the first step weren't like that. The first step was people are engaging with me. By adding me into a circle, they're engaging with me. I want to say thank you for that engagement, and that's where people can be, be, begin. And it's reciprocation-based. Benji's yeah. off I'll pull yeah, I'll, I'll I'll, I really oh, want, go ahead, Mark. I mean, those, that's great. I really want to circle around. You can see what I did there. Oh, circle back around nice. yeah. to uh, uh, to what Ronnie was talking about because I don't think we should we should go past that without how, saying how important that is. If and I realize not everyone is here to uh, 
market something, to spread a message, you know, you have a cause. But a lot of people do have that. They have something that they, you know, they're on social media because they have something that they would like the world to see and to know about. Uh, whatever that may be, the, the power of this network as we start to talk about it going beyond just Google Plus and the things we're talking about building that, you may not even realize the other things that you're affecting. And one of those is the increasing personalization of search itself. So, so I have around 70,000 followers on Google Plus right now. Um, you know, I, I have no idea who most of those people are or you know, whether they're active or not, but potentially that means that I have up to 70,000 people who not only potentially see my stuff on Google+, but when they go into Google search, logged into their Google account and search for things, if, I'm, if I've produced posts or, or shared things that are relevant or recommended things by plus one of them that are re relevant to them, there's a very good chance that my stuff is going to come up higher in their search. Uh, and so I'm influencing them even outside of Google+. At a moment, when I, I know a lot of businesses that would pay a lot of money to have 70,000 people who are, they already know are interested in them and that they can target through their, their business. You know, people spend a lot of money for email marketing to do that. So that's just another little point to point out that if, if you're here for that, uh, realize that the bigger you build your network, the more people you're influencing, not only within Google Plus itself, but across Google. And now, as you mentioned earlier, you know, spreading over into YouTube, you know, all these different aspects. It, it, it sounded almost like a commercial there, uh, Mark Trafagan. Uh, I've got 70,000 followers. You can buy my... Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you can buy access to my audience. That's right. it's, a, it's a dollar a follower per, per yeah. post. 1,000 plus ones for five bucks. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> okay, but so, so now you've opened the door. You've gone and done it. Uh, uh, actually, actually, Ronnie did it uh, uh, with uh, Google Plus and SEO. So, Mark, you've hit on the first one, which is uh, personalization, uh, getting personalized results. Uh, people often get a little bit confused about this because, well, you know, I have a market of, uh, you know, some uh, 350 million people I'm trying to reach in the United States, for example. So 70,000 is a lot of people, but, you know, uh, it's not that large a percentage of all that, but on the other hand, not very few people are actually trying to reach all 350 million people. They're trying to reach the ones who are actually interested in your kind of stuff, and your following is centered around your kind of stuff. So, um, so while 70,000 in one level sounds big and another level sounds small, I'm actually trying to reinforce the idea that it really is big because it's 70,000 people interested in the things that you talk about and therefore giving them personalized messages is is it's like it's a wonderful PR channel effectively they get it in search they get it when you post uh, they get it so many different ways so that that's the first one the second one is you also do get posts that show up non uh, even when you're logged out I can search on uh, Google Plus impact on SEO and I'll see a, a Mark Traphagen uh, post uh, even when I'm incognito, I should say. Uh, so those plus uh, posts can rank themselves. Yeah, if you start to, you know, without getting too wonky or geeky here, uh, you know, some of us know because we've been we've been working on this and experimenting with it for some time now that uh, the Google Plus profiles and pages have a certain amount of, of authority. That Google looks at them with authority, just as Google does when it evaluates websites out on the web. And that gets very complicated and very technical. But if you just know that, that the more, the bigger your network is, the more you're engaging, the more people who are engaging with you, the more other influential people who are engaging with you, all of these things build up the authority of your profile. And that affects search, as Eric just said, even, you know, personalizes obviously the, the, the biggest bang because you're going to have the most influence there. But, you know, as Eric said, you can, you can search for certain things and my content or Martin's content or you know, Ronnie's content will, will come up high in almost everybody's search. Our Google Plus posts will come up often you know, for certain, certain searches uh, just because we've gained uh, a certain level of authority that Google knows our, our content is, is liked and trustworthy and starts to, to elevate it, not even beyond just personalization. So I think that's, that's important. 
So then there's the final leg, which is this one. Uh, uh, we do know, and I hope that's reasonably visible to people. I still haven't mastered how to get this large in this screen. Someday, Ronnie, you're going to have to teach me that. But, uh, uh, but in any case, uh, um, you know, uh, links shared through this uh, link icon in a Google Plus uh, share past page rank, and that's the thing that Joshua Berg, uh, you know, helped us uh, understand uh, oh so long ago. But uh, so that's what's led to the speculation that not only do you get personalization benefits, not only do you get posts themselves ranking in Google search as individual items, but links that you share in Google Plus get page rank and therefore those pages might rank higher. So what does the panel want to say about the, about that? Uh, we, we've got, got some tests going on, haven't we, Eric, at the moment? Well, what, why, yes, we do. Do we know, any, do we know <laughs> anyone, Eric? With that? Yeah, if we only that, knew someone who was testing that, Eric, oh, you know, we could just well, get them on here. Uh, yeah, well, there, there is that. Uh, so I, I was uh, opening the door to somebody else say something about that, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, All right, well, so, I will. I know this guy named Eric. Uh, <laughs> who uh, who conducted some uh, some pretty intensive tests on this over the summer uh, into the early fall here, and uh, you know what Eric was looking at, uh, and a number of us helped on those studies, was exactly how much effect does a link from a Google Plus post have on something out on the web? Uh, does it you know normally we understand that if you get links from other posts or other sites on the web to your site, to your page on your site, that uh, page will tend to start ranking higher for its main keywords. So do Google Plus links act the same way? And just to cut to the, uh, to the, cut to the chase, and uh, I see Ronnie's putting up, we should probably go right to this because Ronnie just posted, put up a little question uh, from Jake out there saying, what does passes page rank mean? So let's that's a great, that's a perfect example we were saying earlier about there's no stupid questions. You're helping, you know, Jake, you just helped a lot of people out there. So just very, very quickly, um, page rank is the blanket term for the very complex ways in which Google assesses the authority of things on the web. So websites, web pages, and as we've mentioned now, Google Plus profiles, pages, and communities. Um, Google is, essentially gives them a score. And we don't see that score, or we don't see the reality of it. In reality, it's a very complex and, and fluid and, and constantly changing score. But it's based on the, all the influences pointing at that page or that profile out there. So links to those profiles. In the case of Google+, Plus, it could be things like people mentioning you, people sharing your posts, commenting on them. All those things could be signals that, that build that page rank authority. And that page rank authority in turn determines how, you know, how well that site or that web page or in our case here, your profile will tend to do in, in search. When, when search goes to, Google search goes to rank what you have written about, it's influenced by that page rank. So I hope that's a good enough you know, fundamental explanation of that. So just, just going back, to just, I'll just finish what I, was, what I was saying a moment ago about Eric's study, just to get that out very quickly without going deep in it. Um, that what we saw in Eric's study was that if you, a single link posted out there, or even just a few links, if, you, if they're very isolated from Google+, if there's no engagement with those posts, if they're, we purposely kept them isolated for the purpose of the test, if they're not reshared, they're not engaged with those few links, that doesn't seem to move the needle at all that we can discern. Um, but we have that fact that Google designed it, and Google can turn that on and off, and they intentionally have it on that the, the main link you share in a Google Plus post passes page rank. So that has to be there for a purpose. And our, our present hypothesis, and I think Eric agrees with this, is that there is some threshold at which, you know, when a link gets shared out, uh, whether it's a certain amount of engagement or reshares or the link being posted by enough people or some combination of that or the link combined with other signals out there on the web that then causes the Google Plus influence to be passed and, and to share. And just the final thing about that, that actually makes good sense from Google's point of view because it would be too easy to just spam links on something like Google Plus if they had some direct effect. So I'm bringing up a, a comment. I'm not sure if you got me blue boxed here or not, but the idea is someone's asking because a lot of people will. What about gaming this? You know, the idea that something can be gamed 
to try to influence. And I think Google's done a masterful job to make that pretty hard to do. What do you guys think? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, it's actually, uh, in some level, you know, in the traditional web world, Google had to worry about filtering bad links. And Jake, for your benefit, a link from one web page to another is basically how Google assesses passing mm -hmm. page rank. Um, so every link passes some page rank, unless Google decides that it's a trashy link and decides that it's counted. But in the world of social media, it's much simpler because let's say you go and try to buy a bunch of profiles or buy a bunch of plus ones or shares or whatever the case may be. Um, the people who are selling you those things, generally speaking, um, you know, have no authority behind them. So they don't actually bring any benefit. So, so let, let me actually make a little more sense of this. Uh, a share by Martin or Mark or Ronnie uh, has a lot of authority, be, not just because they have followers, but because they have so much engagement in their profiles and so many people interacting with them, not only you know, large numbers of people interacting, but also other authoritative people interacting. There's a lot of things there that say that when uh, Arani Bincer shares a link, for example, that that's uh, actually some, some, a, a real meaningful recommendation. And not only that, Ronnie has a reputation to protect, right, because he makes his living online here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, it, hence, he has a lot to sacrifice if he starts pushing crap out. Um, and, and, you know, so that's actually extremely easy for Google to measure. Uh, that's the point, isn't it, is that now, for the first time, really, we've, th there's a, a system, an ecosystem in place that allows this to be tracked and interpreted, and that's where the semantic search stuff starts to come in, is it starts to create meaning around what is going on, who we're connected with, who shares our stuff, who, uh, it, who we then share back, who plus ones, who comments, the sentiment of those comments, the absence as well as the presence of certain activities, um, all of that is trackable and traceable. Uh, and this is where David Amelan's work really comes in. And it's a new way of thinking. And it means that when you are doing these actions, they potentially are going to have meaning attached to them. But there's something, I mean, there's a lot, I know, I'm aware of time. I wanted, I've been looking at the comments and I wanted to pick up on a few things, Eric. Is it possible for me just to, to circle back on a, on a few bits? Sure. Yeah. Firstly, thanks for the positive comments on the moustache. Most important. Thank you for that. So on the threads. Yes, Movember, for those that are, that are wondering. Um, I'll take that off the list now. Um, number of people. You mentioned about this earlier. It is important to have lots of people following you. And Mark said about the, the numbers of followers. Let's look at this a very different way. If you have 20 people follow you, and those 20 have you on notification so that every time that you send something out that they receive it and they have that then in their email but those 20 are the most important for you and they have the networks built and you've just arrived but they look at you and go wow do you know what you are an absolute authority in this I want to make sure that I listen to everything that you say on this particular subject matter they then share your content that amplifies what you sent out straight through into their networks and then potentially the authorities coming back to you and that's only if you've got 20 so I'm checking this out as a model because this even though I think grow your network because it's not a realistic thing for, for most people but potentially this is the way of thinking about it is actually the who you connected with not the numbers because going back to the start 50 to 100 people that are dedicated to what you do will make the world of difference on Google Plus okay so that's the first thing the next thing, going back to personalized search, it relates to that as well. It's not about you having a certain number of people. So if you have a certain number of people, you've got a million people that are following you, they search for uh, content in the future, and you happen to have written an article on it, and it potentially it appears because it's relevant to appear at, at the top for them, and they're one of the million. That's, that's great. But what if you've got 10,000 people following you, but somebody who's got a million people follows you shares that content? Well. In, at some point in the future, somebody searches, and it's personalized search on .com, that then means that potentially your content's going to appear in search in the future. So it's not about now. It's about investing in creating the content that's most appropriate for people to find out who you are and what you do. 
and that's then you know, part of the, the tactics is, is produce the best quality content you can from where you are in order for people to find it in the future. I'll pause there. Oh, yeah, also then the link stuff. I'm, we've got some more tests going on, myself and Eric, and we'll find out a bit more on that. But I just want to let people know how I share stuff and why I do it in that way. I used to share big picture quotes all the time and write a little bit of text and put lots of plus people in it, and uh, then the link would be sitting above, so not an embedded link, it would be a picture that was, in, that was the main thing, and I used to get loads of shares, and that's how I started, and that's when I was particularly blogging within the platform, because it's a pretty picture, people like that. I don't do that as much anymore. I will much more likely use an embedded link that takes people through to the website, as I believe I get more benefit in search than by doing it the other way. But I don't know for sure, and I'm, myself and Eric are running tests to find out, but when people see how I post, that's why I do it, is because it's a belief that I get higher, and it ties back into the, the, the page rank pass, all of that sort of stuff, but it's not fully evidenced, and, and yet I will continue to do that because the number one positions I've got have been used, I've used that strategy, or that tactic rather, to do it. So right. I just want people to be clear why I'm doing the, the things the way I'm doing it. So I'm ask a question with that. When someone's new, yeah. someone's new, use the picture. Just, use the picture. Okay. So in essence, you've built sort of a following around you with one tactic, and then once you had a certain level yeah. of engagement, then you yeah. shifted to a different one. So that absolutely should not be lost on people to necessarily start with the way that the rock star Martin is well, now. That, and that's so important. But also, what you've got to look at is, is one of the big things. If you're going after keywords, and we can talk about why you know keywords are and aren't important now and so on, but there's still relevance to looking at where you, what you want to come up with when people put in keywords. Now, if you go after those, this is a big tip here that, that, that I think that is useful to say. Don't start with the ones that you really, really like to have. So don't go after those wow keywords. Go, oh my god, if I was number one for that, then I'd have so many people coming through to my website. Don't start there. Just play around and test maybe some easier stuff. Because then when you produce the best content, which is the most relevant for the audience to find at a particular point in time, later on, you'll find it's more likely, well, I say more likely, in my experience, this is what I did. I didn't go after what is Google Plus, for instance, when I began. I created a blog post which enabled that to be answered. What is Google Plus? I created the one on my website, which is what is Google Plus, which gets a lot of traffic because it was the best answer at the time and, and still is holding up as number one for that particular search inquiry. So I'd say that there's different stages. Ronnie, you're spot on. There's different stages to the journey, and you've got to understand the context from which all of us are speaking as to understanding what's best for you. So, okay. Okay, I'm throwing up a, uh, a, a comment here from Aaron Johns, uh, a.k.a. The Black Knight. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, he, here's his take on it. Uh, if you're doing anything in social media for link juice, you're kind of bogged down in the previous decade. It's not about links, it's about the engagement. Um, so I'm just going to add my own comment on this, and this is actually similar to something I saw you write quite some time ago, Mark. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. um, it, it's this notion that... Um, well, I'm not going to worry so much about whether there's any link juice coming out of it, to, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm going to go and you know, generate the engagement, build the relationships. I'm going to have great things happen. I'm going to assume that by whatever means Google uses, uh, if I'm establishing myself as an authority on their platform, that they will decide that that merits some value somehow. Uh, and and you know that that's kind of the the mindset I have. It's like just go out there and uh, and you know be an authority, and then let the rest take care of itself. You know, you know what? Each of us here knows that works because we don't. As much as we like to talk about this stuff, and and sometimes because I know in my case because I in certain communities and with certain people, I, I, I you know I talk about this a lot about you know, what passes page rank and what do we think builds the authority. Because that's our that's my profession and that's my hobby and it's my passion and it's interesting and you know it's like the uh, geek about anything you want to get on the inside of it and you know pull the pull the parts out and see how it works, but at the end of the day that's not how I live. I've lived on Google Plus 
not I don't sit down thinking every day all right what's going to send the most page rank to my profile and how can I build enough links to do this or that or build this keyword mm -hmm. uh, I have those things kind of in the in the back of my mind and and they're not they're things that I do think about sometimes but the main thing is doing exactly what Amon John said is um, is building the kind of everything we said in the first three forty five minutes of this uh, this hangout uh, the, the things of building real networks, real engagement. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all of us who have done that, guess what? We a year, you know, year and a half, however long it takes. Later, we start looking out there and we look at Google search and, holy crap, my stuff is is ranking. Uh, you know, I'm getting. I look at my analytics and I say I'm getting lots of traffic from organic search. Mm -hmm. You know. It works. It really works. Right. And, and it's Mark, the content, Mark. Mark. Let's not forget. I'm oh, sorry. But this, it's content and engagement. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. To tie it together, I used to use a phrase called posting on purpose. It's mm -hmm. you just think about why are you making this post, not just to game something, but what impact can it have, and what kinds of words would I normally want to use. This right. is there, there was something purpose. so important that that Google's Matt Cut said it at PubCon last month in his thing. When he talked about it, was it was the most clear it ever talked about what we call social signals. Everybody's geeking out about you know how much do social signals directly affect search, and you know Eric had a hangout with Danny Sullivan of Search Engine Land last week, which revealed that because of Google Hummingbird, they might actually start having much more direct effect than they have in the past. But I still believe what Matt Cut said last month at PubCon. He said. Social is not about a short-term game. It's a long-term game. It's not about, you know, if I get 50 likes or, you know, 100 plus ones today, will my rankings on my search posts go up three points? It's not about that. It's about building a long-term credibility that Google can see, you know, over time that you are consistently got this social network around you that likes what you do and that sends positive signals toward it, that that builds up a reputation that's, that's solid. And one thing we know out of the SEO world is that there's a lot of evidence that old established websites that have built, you know, solid reputation over time are really hard to beat. Um, no matter what techniques you use, they're hard to beat. They've kind of established this long-standing history of trust with Google. And that's what we're doing now, I believe, in the social realm. We're building those relationships, those, those that trust profile with Google that's going to pay off for us months and years down the line. It's not an instant, you know, do this today and get better rankings tomorrow. I'm going to bring one up here that I think is important because it helps get the idea across. Someone's asking, um, if you're being circled by someone that is sketchy, does that make a difference for you? Because as, as you're trying to build up your network, you know, more and more people are going to come that you may not be that interested, but they're going to circle you. Does that make a difference? Well, I got an opinion, but who wants to? Does anybody else want to dive in? My, my first opinion is it doesn't matter because yeah. you're not, I mean, you're, not inter unless, you're not interacting with them or engaging with them. So right. yeah, Go, again, it's not you know what Martin said this earlier. It's really and we've we've proven this. I'm I absolutely believe this. It doesn't really matter to Google that much who follows you overall. It doesn't even matter how many. It, to some extent, it does. I mean, it's, it, you know, but. But it's it's not the most important signal to them even how many follow you. It's who is interacting with you. That's what they're really looking at. Now, if that person is that sketchy person is annoying you, if they are you know posting obscene things they post, yes, block or mute them uh, because they're they're going to drag down the quality of your engagement and and your posts and annoy other people. So do it for that. Don't worry about like that they're sending some bad signal at you. It's it doesn't work that way. Okay, so guys, we're we're in the final two minutes here, and uh, I actually uh, have a panel I'm doing here at SES Chicago in 17 minutes, so I, I've got to try to bring this to a wrap. Uh, uh, Martin, do you want to add, uh, make some final closing comment? I'd say if people want to, to chat further, maybe that's the, the final comment. And plus your business um, community on Google Plus is the place to find me, uh, as well as on my threads. And realize that we all need to remind ourselves when we're starting out, when we're on the first month of the journey, the sixth month of the journey. That's the, the thing I've been taking away from this Hangout and reading the, the threads. So do come and ask questions, please. Um, and remind us that uh, so, some of us are at different points in the journey. 
So you know, we're here to help, and it, I mean, it's an amazing experience. I, I don't know if people need me to, to wax lyrical about how incredible this is for all the reasons. And with Mark saying about the connectivity, you can reach out to people in ways, plus one comment, share, share a lot of other people's content, and they will start to notice you. So if you're in the early phase, now I really, really encourage that. So maybe that's the, my, my final point. Well, great, and I'll, I'll just add a quick final thought too, which is, uh, you know, in, in this age of digital marketing, right, um, we, we've kind of moved past the days where you could learn a few tricks SEO-wise or in some other medium and, uh, and make uh, boatloads of money. You, you have to understand that this is all going to take some work and you're going to have to have some patience and you're going to have to have some learning and you have to take advantage of the tips that uh, uh, we've hopefully all been able to share with you here today. But if you want to be a leader in your space and you want to be a survivor and you want to be someone who thrives, you have to find your platforms and Google Plus is a great one for it. You have to invest the energy, uh, you have to spend the time uh, and if you're really committed to your personal business space and you are actually are an expert in something, i.e. whatever it is you do for a living, then you can do this. It's available for everybody and everybody here in this community is available here to help you. So that's my uh, closing comment. Um, guys, it's been a pleasure to be with you, Martin, Mark, and Ronnie. Uh, uh, it, it's a pleasure always. Uh, uh, and that's it for today's The Digital Marketing Excellence Show. Uh, next week, we're doing uh, communities again uh, with uh, Andre Harasiewicz, Jana Nystrom, and Ryan Crow. Uh, and uh, hope to see you on that one, too. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.